Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Dwelling Place. We are here live right now at 801 North High Street, Dwelling Place Church. And we are so excited that you're joining us. And also want to remind you that there's still plenty of time to make it out to our church service here at 801 North High Street, Millville, New Jersey. We'd love to see you. And today's a special day, and I'm talking to a uh, special friend of mine, Mr. Keith. And um, how you doing this morning, brother? I'm doing well, doing well. <laughs> Amen. Um, well, what I wanted to talk about, we are uh, actually, Keith and I have been in this ministry pretty much since the beginning of the ministry. And today we are becoming licensed uh, associate pastors of this church. And we are extremely excited about that. And I um, wanted to just kind of uh, ask you, you know, what, you know, what brought you into this ministry? What brought you under this, you know, roof? Well, um, I was, I got saved a long time ago before prior to coming to this ministry, but I walked away from the Lord. And uh, I found my way back to the Lord by uh, uh, someone uh, having a card, and they gave me this card, and uh, they said that this place here was a place where you can uh, get yourself together. So I rededicated my life back to the Lord, and, and uh, it's been the same ever since. Amen, amen. Get, getting yourself back together. I, I like the way you put that because a lot of times, you know, once we start to walk away from God, we, we immediately fall apart because it's his spirit, right, that holds us together. And um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that because, you know, Jesus, when he's teaching, he says, you know, which one of you men... You know, if you have a son and he asks for, you know, a fish, we'll, we'll give him a serpent. Or, or, you know, if he asks for bread, you know, we'll give him a, a stone. And he says, if you men who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit? And so he, he so Jesus puts this, he puts this precedent out there. He says, the greatest gift a father can give is what our Heavenly Father gave us in the Holy Spirit. The number one most important thing that God can give to any one of his children is the Holy Spirit. And I've come, and we were just speaking about this earlier, how, you know, we can have everything together and we can have the house and the career and the family and, and all of the accolades and the accomplishments but if we don't have the Spirit giving us true joy in our hearts, then all the other gifts are, they may as well be serpents. They may as well be scorpions and, and stones because the best gift that God could ever give is the gift of His indwelling Holy Spirit in our lives. So what was it like when you first really received the Spirit of God? Oh, when I first, when I first gave my life to the Lord, it, I was never the same. I surrendered my life to the Lord. Uh, I was incarcerated at one time, gave my life to the Lord. At that time, the Lord spoke to me clear as a bell, and uh, I was filled instantly at that particular time with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I have never been the same since then. Uh, there's a difference in walking with God and having that spirit within you and having the power and the wisdom of God in your life versus just getting, just having a few words in you and a few scriptures in you and not really knowing him. So uh, once a person truly surrenders their lives to the Lord and they become dependent upon the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit guides them in every asset of their, every facet of their lives. And that's what uh, walking with God is all about. It's really about trusting the Lord, especially in this time and in this season. We're, we're going through some difficult seasons, and we really need to depend upon the Holy Spirit to lead us, you know, in triumph in every area of our lives. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, it, it, it reminds me of, of the scripture where, you know, where it says, who knows a man, right, better than his own spirit? And we have the spirit of God and, and the mind of Christ, you know, because I can, you know, I can introduce myself to you, you know, and, and tell you all the good things about me and, and really paint a picture of who I am that you will really enjoy, you will really like, you'll, you'll think that I'm, I'm the greatest. But to know me in the deep depth of my spirit is something completely different. You know, exactly. And the word of God tells us that and you shall know them by their fruits. So the, the lifestyle that you live is if it's consistent with the word of God, then people will know who you really are and who and who you aren't, because you have to have a lifestyle that's consistent with what you believe in. If you're relying upon the Holy Spirit, then you can rest assured that the fruits of the spirit will be manifested as well. Amen. Amen. It's so 
it's so awesome to to really have this spiritual presence and 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 we're part of the vine where these 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 branches that spring from this vine Amen. and and like you said the the fruit comes through when you know when we're connected to that vine and um what's really amazing is that you know is that when god's spirit you know comes upon us you know it's like there's this saying that says like a lot of people know the the bible but not a lot of people know the author you know and it's so important to have that spirit living in you when the spirit is living inside of you the word doesn't just become a book that you read but it actually becomes a conversation with your heavenly father where you're reading what he's saying and he's reading your life and you know and it's you, it has to match up and it's the spirit that reminds you of the scriptures and the conversations that you've had with God when it's time to make a decision. I see too many people that say, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord to give me instruction. I'm waiting on the Lord. And I'm not saying don't wait on the Lord. We always want to be in God's timing and not rushing things. However, a lot of the times we're waiting on the Lord and he's already given us instruction in his word and given us the power to carry it out through his spirit. But we won't know that unless we have the spirit living within us. And if what I'm saying, you know, is, is foreign to anyone that's out there, you need to be asking for it that, you know, before Jesus says about, you know, the gift of the spirit, what does he say? He says, ask, knock, you know, and, and it'll be given to you. So if you don't have that spirit living in your life and you feel like you're not hearing God's voice, ask him. It's just that simple. Amen. I'm going to say one, gonna say one more thing. And another thing, too, uh, especially for the believers, you know, for young believers and, uh, and for this ministry right now today. I think one of the reasons why, you know, the fivefold ministry is so important is because we have that kind of responsibility of making sure that we sow into the people, God, the things that God wants them to know and God wants them to hear. And so that's, a, that's one of the, you know, fallacies sometimes in ministry. We've got to be mindful that God's concerned about building his people up. And so the responsibilities of those fivefold ministries is just to do that. We're trained, we're disciplined in it, and we've got to make sure that we shepherd God's people the way God intends them to be shepherded. Amen. Amen. That's that's so important. Which kind of, which kind of leads me into you know um, how I'd like to close. Which is, you know, what do you feel is is your role? Like now you're here, you're planted, right? You were you were you know you you you're, you're falling apart, and and you needed to get back together. So you come into this ministry. I know that you know you've always been there for the uh, for the men in the homes and and you know and serving in the church, you know, and serving at the Freedom Market you know and, and doing all of these great things where do you think god is leading you next within this church or even you know just going forward in in just your spiritual journey well i i, I have a tendency to take it one step at a time one act of faith is what i call it. i call it one random act of faith at a time and i've learned to trust god in this season so uh, once i've gotten saved i gave my life to the lord i've been planning in this ministry there's times i've wanted to walk away from this ministry but it's learning to listen to the voice of god if you learn to listen to the voice of god Amen. everything else will fall into place so i don't Amen. try to see beyond this area right now all i do is trust god in this season and god will lead me in next season as he sees fit Amen. 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 That's how we have to do it, right? Amen. God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So he's going to light us Amen. one step at a time. Well spoken. I'm proud and happy Amen. to be in ministry with you. God bless Love you, you brother. Love Let's you go on in and Amen. get some worship going. Praise the Lord. We'll see you. Amen. Woo! Welcome, 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 dwelling place. How are we doing this morning? Is, is, is everyone okay? Man, it's a good morning. Hi, this weather, I'm starting to really enjoy the weather. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I came to worship. Let's stand to our feet. Let's just, let's just pray. God, we just thank you for this morning, Lord. We just thank you for what you have brought us here to do, Lord. We, we know that you want to work in us and through us, God. And so we just ask that you would have our way, Lord, and that we'd open the hearts of your people, God, that they would receive what you want to give them this morning, Jesus. We just glorify you. We praise you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun, oh, we look to the sun, we're going to sing salvation. 
Get those hands going. See a kingdom burst in the cup at the speed of light. Sing freedom. And your freedom shaking up the atmosphere. As the shadows fade in the night and as the day appears. Beyond the sky. Beyond the skies above. Love reaching out. Our God, oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of the. Come on, sing His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Oh, we're looking to you, Jesus. Oh, we look to you, God. Creation. Creation. Waking up to kingdom come. See the hope of heaven shining like the rising sun. Now forever. Now forever. Lifted up from dead to life. There's no fear. There's no fear in love and on darkness in his endless life. Beyond the skies, come on church, sing it out. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us. The everlasting one, come on. Jesus our God, we look, oh we look to the sun. Set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love. Sing his praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Oh, we look to you, Jesus, this morning. Oh, we look to the sun. Sing beyond the skies. Come on, church, help me out. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us. The everlasting one, Jesus our God. Sing it again, come on. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us. We are the lasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love. Come on, church, sing His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Oh, we look to the sun. Come on, give us a praise. Oh, God, you're worthy. Just tell me he's worthy. Oh, Lord. Thank you. 
How many know he's never going to let us down? You're never going to let me down. You're never going to let me down. Come on, somebody needs to say that this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're never gonna, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh. The 
we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you come on it's who i am it's who i am can we just tell me he's perfect oh jesus you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Come on. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're perfect, Jesus. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Come on, one more time, tell them. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're good. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Come on. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amen. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Come on, I'll give you a few moments to wake up. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. Come on, God is good at all the time. He fights for us when we don't even know it. You know that? He's worthy of all the praise this morning. Even if we're tired and even if we walk in, we've fought a few battles. You know, I've learned in my life, when you're going through the hottest fire is when you have the greatest praise. You know that, right? You have the greatest praise. You worship. When you worship, and it's just amazing. I asked Tony to get ready to sing this course with me just one time. I want to sing this course. And if you need a touch from God this morning, if you say, Pastor, I need a touch in my body. We believe we're a full gospel church. We believe still in the moving of the Holy Spirit. We believe he sets the captive free. Amen. We believe if you're sick in your body, one touch. You know that? The woman with the issue of blood, just one touch of Jesus' garment healing flow. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Anointing flow. We need the anointing to flow once again in our churches. We need the Spirit to move once again in our churches. Oh God, awaken us. Awaken us this morning. If you need a touch in your body, I just want you to raise a hand to heaven right now. If you need a physical touch in your body right now. All right. Now all my church people who have already walked in healing, I want you to turn around and now I'm going to, I'm, 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 calling you my pastors go find someone everybody find someone with a hand risen this morning go lay hands on them come on come on get out your seats somebody go lay hands on mark over here on mike on john right here in the back on elvis come on i need someone back there keep your hands risen somebody go back there right there on mark franco go back there pray with mark brother go ahead sing it come on lift your voices come on sing it for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve. 
deserve the glory. Okay, if you know it, I want you to lift your voices. Come on. Oh, Jesus, Sing to the Lord, Tony. Sing to the Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Oh, you're worthy. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. Yes, you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy of it all. Everything you are worthy, Jesus. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, just your voice and sing it. Come on. You are worthy of it all. Come on, church. Lift your voices this morning. You are worthy of it all. You sound beautiful. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Oh, he deserves all the glory this morning. Father, you deserve all the glory this morning. Church, would you take a moment and pray with me? Lord, we come before you and we declare in this house, Jesus Christ is Lord over all creation. Let no pastor be glorified. Let no church be glorified. Let no system be glorified. Let no government be glorified. But let the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in this house this morning. If you believe that, say amen this morning. Amen. Come on, give the Lord about 15 seconds of clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. How many people can testify this morning if it had not been for his goodness in my life? Somebody wave at me. Remember when we were backslidden? Remember when we were, when we were wandering like sheep with no shepherd? We played the harlot. He said, yup, I still love you. You're my daughter. You're my son. Amen. Amen. You got a word, honey? I just have a couple announcements before we do something very special today that you're in store for. But um, this week we pushed back our surrendered circle to this Thursday. So a couple people got confused as to which day was what because the first day fell on um, a Thursday of April. So we're doing it this week. So ladies, you did not miss out. Aren't you happy? So you get to come this week to Surrendered Circle. It's at 6.30. And um, we're just excited for what God is doing in our house. We actually have um, a licensing today with five pastors. And how funny, it's the number five. It's the number of grace that God has on this house. And on the 25th of this month, which not the next Sunday, but the following, we're having our anniversary service with our apostle, Jeff Leak. He's coming in to preach and have a special message message for us and minister so we're so excited um, but I did want to share a quick word I was hoping that Beatrice was here but I don't think that she is yet but one of her little girls had a dream and I want to share it I'm probably not going to do justice but she had a dream that our um, ceiling opened up and above the ceiling was angels and there was all these different colors and every bondage was being broken and including she said specifically coronavirus and any bondage any generational curse was being broken and i just feel to say that over any of you who are struggling with he with needing healing or in your mind emotionally god is breaking all of those things off of you today in the name of jesus and the other thing i I wanted to say is that you are so blessed the Bible says that when Jesus turned to Thomas and Thomas finally agreed okay you are Christ the Lord I see your wounds in your hands and your wound on your side and he said but Thomas 
Blessed are those who haven't even seen and believe. So I declare over you, you are blessed because of your faith in Jesus. You are so blessed. He loves you. You are highly favored. His grace is all over you. Just reach up and grab whatever you need right now. Just grab it. Just grab it. It's your portion. Sickness is not your portion. Debt is not your portion. Fighting with family members and friends is not your portion. Emotional torment is not your portion. I declare peace, healing over you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Tony. Awesome. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? Shoot. She's about to preach the whole service up here. Oh, just sit, more, just sit right more. there, Pastor. Kids are dismissed. Oh, oh yes. Kids are Amen. dismissed. Amen. See, I feel like if I preach right here, I, you guys wouldn't see me. I'd just be like, hey. I'd like go on my tippy toes. Anyways, we've got, <laughs> hallelujah. Man, and we got the brown shoe memo. Who got the brown shoe memo? Right? Come on. Okay, okay. Amen, amen. I'm so glad that we get to be in the house of the Lord today. Gosh, I just, how many times have I heard that? Someone say that, and I get to say that now. That's so cool. Amen. So, announcements. Say announcements. A few things. Tuesday night at 6.30, we got men's group. Okay, if you're a man, if you're a male human being, I'm looking at you guys right here. I'm seeing men. Be there at 6.30. Free food. Who doesn't like free food? Come on, right? Free food, free fellowship, though. That's, that is, that's becoming more expensive now, if you know what I'm saying, right? That, that fellowship. So, come get the fellowship with the men, men of God, though. And that's so good. If you're new, to, if you're a man and you're, you're walking, you're, you're new in your walk with God, this is a, a group you need to be a part of to get around these men who have been walking through it and have been through it and been through it and then some and then some and fell back and came back and fell. You know what I'm saying? So, get around those guys. Come on. Wednesday nights from 6 to 8, we've got what? Wednesday night fire. <laughs> he said power night. Wednesday night fire. Wednesday night fire is an amazing night. Please be there. Come on. We've, we're having an amazing time. God is, the, the spirit just gets to, to have its way a little bit differently. When you just open up the mic and you just get to have anyone who has a word on their heart, it, it, they just get to, to, to share it. And there's something so powerful about that. And so be there. You will not not regret it. Amen. We got Friday nights. What's going on on Friday nights? Launch youth. We, oh man, our youth group has come so far already. We've got about... 15 consistent kids that we get to sow into, my wife and I, Tori, the, the, the most beautiful youth pastor that there is. Come on. Hey, hallelujah. No, but we really are having, uh, um, we're really enjoying being able to sow what was once sowed into us by our youth pastors and being able to, you know, to continue on the chain. And that feels, for us, it's so amazing. And I, I, being able to do that is such an honor. But that being said, if you are between 12 and 18 and you've not come to youth, it's, uh, again, free food. We love the free food thing, right? You're born in New Jersey. Come on, right? So we got pizza, of course. Praise God. But we, we're, we're playing some games. But most importantly, we're sharing the word of God in and, and a, and a way that they can understand, in a way that that is not just a Sunday morning. Because sitting in Sunday mornings, they need that too, right? But there's something different about when they get to receive a word on, in that atmosphere, right, with their friends. And there's, it, it's a lot easier to receive from that. Amen? So we're so grateful for that. And last thing but not least, Dynamite Music, my beautiful wife and I, we have started a music lesson business to provide for us um, while we're here, and God has absolutely blessed it so incredibly. That being said, if you have the interest to take lessons, it's not too early, it's really not too late, five and up, okay? We want to sow into you guys, and not just teaching you how to play an instrument, but how to worship, right? And so we, we just feel that is so important, there's not enough of that. There's a lot of music teachers, and there's a lot of uh, people taking music lessons, but not enough people learning how to worship, right? And not just from your seat, but how do I worship with this thing in my hand, or how am I going to worship with these things in my hand? What does that look like, right? And so we want to, to, to share that as well as the theory and as the, the good stuff. So anyways, pastor, look at this fine, look at, shoot, look at him fix his jacket. Stop playing. Amen, amen. Hey, jump up on there. I got to start taking the mic from him a little bit earlier, amen. But so many, so good to see so many good people. I see so many of our military people are back from, uh, where, who am I missing over here? Who, who just came back from the military? Anybody? Kenny did, but also uh, this is Ron's son over here. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of our military men that have just came back. Would you stand up for a moment? We want to honor you. Uh, thank you. Come on. Thank you for serving our country. 
Thank you for laying your life down. We honor you. We honor you. I always, I always wanted to be in the military. I always wanted to be in the military. But now I'm in God's army. You know, you're, you know, you know when God has a plan. When I can't, I cannot get a job as a, uh, I can't deliver mail because of my record. But I can deliver the anointed message. Isn't God funny? <laughs> My TSA clearance is messed up, but my heavenly clearance is good. God is faithful. Amen. But we thank you for all of our military men and women. We will continue with our uh, worship this morning as our ushers begin to make their way down here this morning. Come here, angel. Come here, angel. I eat uh, Nancy and Elvis. These are four of my favorite people. Come here, come here, angel, come here, come here. Mira, vente. Come on, come here. Ah. You know, I love humble people. Humble people make me want to make you, and I want to, when you're humble, I want to like thrust you into, into some place. Humble, so humble. Humbleness is a dying um, art in our lives, in our lives, in our ministries today. Uh, Angel and um, is he's just so humble, man. And they have begun to really pour into our men's and women's home. And I was riding with Glenn the other day, and he's such a good boy. And we're talking, and and, and I said, "Well, how do you get to your classes? And how do you get to this?" And he goes, "Oh, Angel and I used to pick me up. They never make a big deal about it. They never tell anybody about it. Do your do your works in secret." And your heavenly father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. So consider this an open reward from heaven. Amen. Amen. Angel, I'm going to have you pray over the offering today. He'll, he says, don't get me a mic, but you have to have a mic because people are watching on the internet. All right. Uh, obedience. All right. There it is. Um, but I want to share with you guys. Um, you guys, have you guys noticed the transformation in this place? All right. We got paintings on the walls. We got some new carpets. You didn't even notice the new carpets came in. Some new seats. You are the first person to ever sit in that seat in Melville, New Jersey. Amen? All right. The carpets, the carpets and the chairs cost us, I think, $15,000 together. So that's a small thing to the Lord. That's a drop in the bucket to God. Amen? So we're going to give you an opportunity as you come with your regular tithes and offering. If you feel that you would like to uh, sow into that or pay for a chair or whatever you want to do, uh, if you want to put in a memo, get an extra thing or uh, get an envelope in the back and just write chairs over the next couple weeks, next month, if you didn't come prepared today, you know, come next week with a little love offering to help cover this because we want to, we want to continue to make God's house beautiful. Amen. Angel, come pray, brother. This guy always uh, seems to put me on the spot, right? I don't like these microphones, by the way. Like, I can just give it to him and pray out loud, and every day will be good, right? Anyway, Heavenly Father, we thank you for just uh, giving us the opportunity to gather today in, in your presence and just love on each other, man, as, as you desire. We ask that you take this offering, our little, and, and, and bless it abundantly. As we understand that this really not ours, but all yours. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, where's the, um, where's Lisa Perillo? Where's my certificates? Well, today is uh, our 
today is our licensing service. Um, we have uh, began the ability now in our ministry to begin to license, credential, and ordain ministers. And I've been so blessed to have, first of all, everybody's a minister. I want you to know that. You're a minister. There's, everybody's a minister. You are a minister of the gospel. If you don't know that, I've now just let you know you've been enlisted. And it's your responsibility to carry this gospel, right, to your neighbor, to your enemy, to your Republican friend, to your Democratic friend, to your white friend, to your black friend. It's your responsibility. We can't stand before God and say, well, God, I was upset. I didn't like them. No, no. <laughs> Jesus said, I got a new commandment. You heard what I told you before. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He says, but I got a new way. Love those who persecute you. Love them. It's what separates us from the world. We love our enemies. We love them. And we love our pastors. Pastors aren't our enemies. I had to flip that one real quick. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read something to you today. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 reads, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Can I remind you where Paul was when he wrote this epistle? He was in prison, having a bad day for preaching the gospel. But you know what he said? I'm going to preach this gospel anyway. Here, here's the part that really got to me. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Because you become licensed as a minister does not make us somebody high in fact it's contrary it's a reminder that you stay low we've messed it up today in American culture we honor we honor men of God we honor women of God but the reality is Jesus didn't come to be served he came to serve as a minister of the gospel if I can get anything into your spirit today this is not a promotion of a name on a billboard mm -mm. In fact, you're being marked right now, not only by God, but you're being marked also by the enemy. And the only way to beat the enemy is by staying low. Because he who humbles himself will be exalted. But he who exalts himself will be humbled. Stay low. Stay low. Verse 3, endeavoring to keep unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was giving according to the measure of Christ's gift. Everybody in this house, listen to me. You have a, you have a gift of, it's called charisma or charis. There's a gift inside of you. Yours might be different than somebody else. God has called you maybe to, to be someone who serves or someone who preaches or someone who builds or someone who financially. God has done something inside of you that he's done in nobody else. Are you with me this morning? Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. What does it mean? That he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascends far above all the heavens that he may fill all in all things. And he himself, this is Jesus Christ, gave some to be apostles, to be prophets, to be evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And contrary to teaching, it's not a pecking order. It's a fivefold. It's like your hand. You cut your thumb off, you feel it, right? That means your thumb is not better than your ring finger. Ever, titles, listen to me, I gotta say this, especially in this region for some reason. Titles don't make us who we are. The man and the woman of God makes the title what it is. Come on. You can have a title and not be anointed. Oh 
we'll, we'll save that for another day. For the equipping of the saints. Oh, here is what it is. We didn't get, we're not, God didn't put you in ministry that you could walk around and be puffed up. He goes, no. So you can equip the saints. You can pour your life out. Your job is not to be bougie. Come on. It's true. I'm telling you, you act like I'm lying. But the reality is we have come to lay our life down. We have come to die for this thing. I've come to say, if I live, if I die, it's Christ. If I live, I die, if I Christ is gain. I'm here to preach the gospel. I'm here to tell broken people who Jesus is. I'm here to tell everyone he is Jesus. He is the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. For the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, till we come again to the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Honey, we're going to begin to lay hands this morning. I would like to start, if I could have, uh, we have five recipients today. One is gone. Alfred is gone. When he gets back, we will lay hands on him. And uh, But today we're going to start. If I could have you four uh, stand up today, stand here and face the church. I would like to start. We're going to put Keith, Keith, Franco, Ray, and Caroline. I'm going to show you there's a specific... I placed them in order of when I met them. Honey, grab Keith's. Keith was our first, one of my first disciples here. One of my first disciples. And uh, look, just, just look how, just, just look at this young man. Look, good looking young man. And he's, he's, how old are you? 55. 55. I thought he was 29 when I met him. It's not fair. Black brothers always look young. It's just not right. Well, Tyson, why is that? The jeans. <laughs> we, we keep, the only jean me and him share is our heads. Amen. And Keith is, uh, been, was our first disciple. Came, and this man, is a, he has the word in him. The word. You get around Keith, you see, he, he studies the word. The word is in him. And then I'll start, a, I'll start a scripture. He finishes it many times. But you know what? When, we, when Keith stumbled into our, into our ministry, he wasn't preaching the gospel. He was like one of those sheep that went wayward. Like we all have. We all have. But God is so graceful. He knew where Keith belonged. Keith belongs preaching the gospel. And today we want to lay hands on Keith. And Keith, you have been so faithful to this house. You've been so faithful to me. I remember the early days. We were in two different buildings, and I would call on you, and you'd come, and we'd set up in one church at 6 in the morning, put everything up to everything down. Everybody would go home for lunch and a nap, and then me and you would by ourselves go over to the other building and set up the whole church service by ourselves, and you were faithful, and you've been so faithful. We have sat, and we've had heart-to-heart -heart talks, and we've laughed together. We've shed tears together. We've sharpened each other. You have been a blessing to me, my wife, and our family. So today, with the authority that God has given me as an apostle of this house, my wife as the senior pastor, today we set you, Keith, in this ministry, in the office of a pastor. And Father, we bless this man of God, and we thank you that you've given him to us. You have been a gift to us. Anything I've ever asked you to do, Keith, you've done. Keith, let's make a sign. I got you, Pastor. Keith, let's tint the windows. I got you, Pastor. Keith, let's sweep and mop. I got you, Pastor. If you can't sweep and you can't mop, you can't preach in this pulpit. You have stayed humble. You've never asked me for anything. You've never said, let me preach. But because of that, I'll let you preach. You've never said, give me a title. But because of that, I'm going to set you in. Today, let it be registered in heaven. And registered here at 801 North High Street. We said, Keith Feeney as an associate pastor in the office of the fivefold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, stay here. Stay here.
today, uh, this is my dude right here, Franco, man. Um, eight years ago, eight years ago, I uh, called Franco's brother, who was my friend who I grew up with, and I said, hey, come up and, you know, I'm doing this outreach. Can you come to Maine? He goes, no, nah, I don't do hip-hop no more, but check out my brother. But when, usually when they tell you to check out the other guy, he's usually not good, you know? And I was like, come on, Eric. Nah, you come. And I didn't know Franco. He said, now call my brother. So it was Maine, and nobody else raps in Maine. <laughs> so I called Franco. And you know, we got on the phone our first half hour, and man, we just hit it off, and he's talking about dreams and visions and prophesying. I said, I like this guy. I like him. And him and Trina and their hype man came to Maine. And I, I, and I have to apologize right now to Trina. I put them in, in, I put them in the worst hotel. <laughs> I didn't know it was a crack hotel. I didn't check out Trip, I didn't check out Trip Advisory. It said $49.99. And that's why I kept saying, yo, just come by yourself. Because if you come with your wife, man, I got to try to at least like be a little bit more bougie. But I put him in this hotel in Frank. <laughs> The next day was like, yo, I don't mind coming, but man, I think somebody got shot next door to me. <laughs> and I said, you're from Violin, you'll be okay. <laughs> and uh, he came and he ministered and we've stayed in contact throughout the years. And then we came back to start a work and we didn't know anybody, even though I was born and raised here, you know, all the people we knew aren't serving God or they're in another church somewhere. And we just started talking to Trina and Franco and Trina came and, and then Franco started coming and, uh, he showed up at, our, at the grand opening and said, you're my pastor, this is my church, I'm gonna serve. He never asked me, he never said to me, give me a title. He never said to me, you know I can preach. He never said it to me. I knew he could, but he never asked for anything. You know the Bible says that a man's gift or a woman's gift will make way for them and he shall set them before kings. And Franco, you are a teacher of the word of God a legit teacher, in the office of a teacher. And you have been such a blessing to me. In fact, when I call on you to teach, I know many times I'm not here, but if I ever just have been weary from traveling and I get to sit, I so enjoy hearing you teach because you, all, you handle the God's word very properly and very clearly. And today, with the authority that God has given me as an apostle of this house, it's with my great honor and authority to set you in office as a teacher. And, and, and you may say, oh, Lord, I'm not worthy, but that's why he put you there. We're not worthy. We're blessed, highly favored. You've been a good brother to me. I can still remember the early days when I moved here, and I was disappointed that I didn't get a church that I thought I was going to get. And I had me and my wife and my kids, and we had no money. I can still remember you showing up and say, the Lord spoke to me, Pastor. Hand me a handful of money and say, here, get your family some groceries. You've been faithful, Franco. You've been faithful. You serve the men. You teach the men. You lay your life down. Anything I call on you to do, you sweep, you mop, you clean. Anything I've asked you to do. So today, it's with great honor, we set Franco Acevedo into the five-fold ministry as a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love you, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Every once in a while, God will bring by your side someone who you could uh, hide a body with. Amen. And also storm the gates of hell with. And that's right more. Don't act like you don't know that. <laughs> and God used, you know, it's so amazing how God sets things in order. God used one of our frenemies. You know what a frenemy is? Someone who acts like their friend, but they're really your enemy. God used one of our frenemies. We had a mutual frenemy. Gospel truth. He tried to destroy Ray. He tried to destroy me, but you can't touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. But what God used was 
that connection and I found Ray sitting on a board at a dead church willing, uh, withering away. True story. True story. Brought him. Said, hey, listen, just sit. Don't do nothing. Just rest. Him and Kat and the kids came and rested for a season. And then something I began to spark in him. He began to church hurt. You know, you ever get hurt in a church, it can hurt you. It can devastate you. I mean, it could crush you. And God used what the enemy meant for bad and turned it for good. Amen? And Ray has been so faithful. Anything I've asked him to do, he served. I remember when our church was in financial ruins, when we had nothing, he just began to pray and fast and say, I'm with this with you, Pastor, and we're going to see this thing through. And he's been a good friend to me and my family. And we love him, man. We trust him. Ray's going to be the first church we plant out. We're going to send Ray to Florida. Amen. Like September, maybe? You notice he didn't feel a call to, like, North Dakota. He felt a call uh, conveniently to Lake Alfred. Lake Alfred, right? In, in Florida. Um, but right today, it's uh, a great honor that we set you in the office of a pastor in this house. You have been so faithful to me and my wife and to this house. You've been a true, a true armor bearer. Anything I've ever asked from you, you've helped me with. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you've gifted us with these men and women of God that are strong in the faith that can handle the word, that can prophesy. I remember during the lockdown when you were just so amped up, walking through the streets of Milva with a bullhorn. This is a true story. With the, he walked through the streets of Milva with a bullhorn saying, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord is returning. Repent of your sins. Jesus, what a man of God. Thank you, Father. So today we set you in the office, in the fivefold, as a pastor in Dwelling Place Network. Bless this man, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you. Amen. Come on, honey. Today, um, and Ray, Ray, Ray not only brought his family, but he brought gifts, right? He said, man, there's this really anointed girl that can sing you got to meet her she's prophetic i said please bring her to us and caroline showed up one sunday and uh i asked her i said caroline would you jump in and lead our worship team in this season of transition for us she goes no problem pastor i'll lead it for you caroline will you help me paint things on the wall no problem caroline will you do this and help me with the mission board no problem caroline yes no problem will you help us with this yes, no problem she has a true revelation. She are faithful. You are faithful, Caroline. You've been so faithful to us. You actually have one of the greatest revelations of giving that I've ever met of anybody in my life. She takes it very serious. I don't check anybody. I don't know what anybody does with you and your finances. I don't check anybody's finances. But I asked Lisa to give me a report on any of my pastors and leaders. Because the Bible says where your money is, is where your heart is. You can come to church and not give. That's between you and God. I don't judge you. But if you want to walk with me, I got to know I can trust you. Caroline will put a tithe in for $2 sometimes. She does her other ones, but that means someone, I know, I'll say, I'll say, my, I'll say to Lisa, oh, someone gave her 20 bucks. She can't wait to get it, out, get it out, get out of her hand. Faithfulness. And I told them earlier, it's always the first test. And when God can trust you with this, he can trust you with the kingdom. Amen. And so today, uh, Caroline, today it was such great honor and privilege as me and my wife get to lay hands on you and set you in the office of a prophetess. You are truly a prophet in this house. You truly, many times, me and my wife will sometimes be talking about something and then you'll send me an email and oh, that's a confirmation of what we're going through. So I want to lay hands on you right now. Father, today in Jesus' name, thank you for this young lady you have blessed us with. She has been so faithful to this house and to this ministry. Even when I said, Caroline, I need you to switch gears and jump over here. She said, okay, pastor, no problem. I'll be obedient to whatever you ask me. 
So, Father, today we pray that her spirit of obedience and faithfulness today will be honored in this house. And we set you into the house as a five-fold minister of the gospel, as a prophetess in this house. Father, use her. I pray we begin to have the school of prophets in this house. I pray that you will begin to find other prophetesses and prophets and begin to lay hands on them and begin to teach them how to hear from God. Bless her today, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This is the class of 2021, church. Amen. Hey, honey, get over there. Get on that. Get by Caroline. Everybody get in. Somebody, uh, I don't got my phone on me. Somebody grab that picture real quick and send it to me. Amen. Come on. Mimi, jump in there. Get that picture for us. Amen. 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 All right. Hold on. Let me. Hold on. Hold on. Let me move this real quick. Are we good? Amen. Okay. One more time. The class of 2021. Amen. Go ahead, Jade. Jade, okay. Jade's got something to say to you guys. Um, so as I was praying, because I always like to ask the Lord for a word, and he did not give me an individual one for each of you, but he showed me an eagle, and he reminded me of how um, when they put them in the zoo or different places, they clip their wings so that they can't fly. And I said, God, what you're telling me to say to them doesn't make sense in the natural. But he said he's clipping your wings today so that you can soar. Amen. And nothing is, and he wants you to take this major trust fall yeah. towards him. And it does not have to be perfect. You don't have it to have it all together. You don't have to have all the details. He just wants you to take this huge soar of, of faith with him. And he is clipping your wings because he's setting you in motion today in the spirit he's saying i'm setting you i'm setting you in motion amen amen, amen. we received that word amen officially now you guys now are officially recognized by not only our network the most important thing who you're recognized is by god because you can buy an ordination card online for twenty dollars you can get your dog ordained <laughs> for twenty dollars online but that don't mean nothing you can get a, an ordination out of a box of Cracker Jacks. Do they sell them still? But now you are officially licensed in our ministry. You've been commissioned to preach the gospel. You can now officially go to pr any prison, or any jail, and uh, you have what they call clergy, um, clergy privilege. Well, when clergy prisoner uh, privilege, what's it called? Clergy penitent privileges when somebody comes. Oh, let me just tell you a couple things real quick. As a, as a licensed minister now, if anybody comes to you ever and confesses anything to you, you are legally, legally, it's called clergy penitent privilege, you cannot say a word of what anybody's told you to anybody. That's it's like you, you receive it, you pray with them, and you give it to God. You can't even tell your spouses what someone has told you in secret. Now you can ask them, can I tell my spouse? If they say no, you could actually go to jail for revealing what someone has uh, confessed to you. That's how serious this is. You also now can do ceremonies and weddings legally. You can now sign anything because now you are licensed and minister. And you go to jail, but lawyers have the privilege to go into a jail, so do ministers. You can go to any jail and uh, visit anybody at any time without permission or visiting hours, amen? So your prison ministries are starting soon. All right, guys, we love you guys. God bless. Where's, uh, where's Michelle? She's not here? Where's she at? Oh, she's hiding. What should we do with Alfred's now? We should wait. We're going to wait, all right? All right, give that to Lisa. That's Alfred's, all right. Amen, amen. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. All right, we got to, I'm going to share a quick word with you. If you have your Bibles, open up to Romans. And uh, I didn't, look at Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 17. I'm going to give you some time because I know you didn't get them. 
Romans 11, 29, and Ephesians 4, 30. It doesn't work? Oh, wow. Tony, go, go help them out, Tony. Romans chapter 10. Well, that'll teach everybody to bring your Bible to church. Romans chapter 10. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Look at Romans 11 and 29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Now before you amen that, hold on because I'm about to teach you something a little contrary to your amen. You can be gifted and you can have a calling, but you can lose your anointing. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to. There's many people standing behind paupers today. The Holy Spirit left them a long time ago. I told you, before you say amen, hold on for one second, all right? <laughs> and Ephesians 4 and 30 says this. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were once sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Look at the Lord has to remind us. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ has forgiven you. Father, help me deliver your word today to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. The calling. Say with me, the calling. Now, you may think, okay, great, he's talking to the preachers. No, I'm talking to every single one of us. If your neighbor does not know that you believe in Jesus, we have failed miserably. I'm going to say that one more time. If your next door neighbor, the person who lives next door to you, right next door, you see them, you know, you complain about their music, they're squealing the wheels, whatever may happen, if they do not know you are a Christian, it is illegal and irresponsible to ask God for another level of anointing when he, he said first, you know, let those in Jerusalem, your closest person, know who Jesus is. So today's message about the calling is all of us. Everybody has a calling. I remember when I was in sin. Anybody remember those days? Remember them? <laughs> You know what I want my kids, I want my, my kids' story to be? I used to hear all the preacher's kids say this. I remember falling asleep on the church pews. Any, is that anybody's testimony? Fall asleep on church pews, get the anointing by osmosis. Amen? <laughs> I missed that. I wanted that to be my calling. That wasn't my, my endeavor. But when I was in sin, the Lord used people to, to speak to me. I remember September 11th. It was two days after September 11th. I was living in Florida. And the whole world was in shock, kind of like now with the coronavirus thing and all the craziness going on. And I was sitting there smoking a cigarette on my break in Fort Lauderdale, and some man comes up to me and begins to share with me the gospel and says to me very clearly, you need to repent of your sin. Jesus is coming back very soon. Get your life right with God. And I was captivated, smoking a big old Newport 100. <laughs> I blew it to the side. It's okay. <laughs> See, if I was ever smoking cigarettes again, I want those things that you put on the end of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Big old Newport 100. And, and, and this man came and preached the gospel to me, shared the gospel with me. And I was captivated all at once. I was Felt like a, I felt like undone, but at the same time, you know what? Because God's word is alive. Amen. It's sharp. Amen. It pierces. You don't realize this. God could use a donkey. He can surely use you and me. 
Many times we feel unqualified to tell someone. I can guarantee you every single one of you in this room at one time have felt a burden. You saw somebody walk by. You felt unctioned by the Holy Spirit. Tell them who I am. But you felt like, I don't mm -mm. mm -mm. And the worst is get around your own family, your own flesh and blood. They're the hardest people to tell Jesus. I, you, could find a, you could find a crackhead on the street smoking crack. Literally. We were just up at K&A. We seen some guy, literally, he was shooting it on his arm. Hey, put that down for one second. Let me tell you about Jesus. Don't put that in your arm. But sometimes you get around your own family, and I'm trying to talk about Jesus. I can't get it out. I don't know why it's like that. But somebody needs to tell them, right? Somebody needs to tell them. I was, um, I was living in New York. I was living in Utica, New York, and I was really messed up, strung out on drugs, just all messed up. I mean... I was like a lab rat. You should have saw what I looked like. And there was a girl that worked. Is my wife in here? She's not in here. She always yells at me about these when I tell these stories. That's all under the blood anyway. All under the blood. It's all under the blood. And there was a girl that worked at this Sola Maria. It was an Italian name for like uh, lunch meat only, where they sold lunch meats. You know, nice capicol, nice mortadelle sandwich. Yeah. And I went there to get a sandwich, but there was a pretty girl behind the counter. I said, oh, how you doing? I, I told my wife, I said, honey, please don't ever die and go to, because I wouldn't even know how to talk to anybody after this. I'm, all my game is gone, right? It's gone. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, I see you're new to the neighborhood. And she was not impressed at all. She was just cutting away. And I was trying harder and harder. And one day she was like to me, she goes, she goes, uh, would you, would you ever want to go to church? I said, church. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll make a deal with you. You pick me up, I'll go to church with you. She goes, no, I'm not picking you up. I sent one of the deacons to pick you up. I said, man, I can't break through to this for nothing. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll go. She sent the deacon to my house. He's laying on the horn. I'm laying in bed terrified. Because <laughs> she's been sharing the gospel with I'm going in to buy sandwiches. And every time she's sharing them, when she's not interested in me, she was on an assignment by God. She was not swayed. She just kept saying everything. She was like, hey, God loves you. He's got a plan for your life. The wages, she tell me this. The, the first time I ever heard the scripture, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I didn't know what it meant, but in the spirit, the word of God begins to do something in you. And you think you're not worthy to share God's word, but if you would, by faith, just take a step and begin to sow the seed, let God's word do the rest. Because while I'm in there with some bad intentions, this woman has a sword in her hand and sharing God's word for me. And I didn't go getting what I wanted. I got what I needed. Amen. Right? God sent a messenger. God sent a messenger. You don't realize. See, the Bible says one sows, one waters, and God gives the increase. And you get frustrated because you've been sowing a seed there and you've been sowing a seed there and you're sowing a seed there and you're sowing a seed there and nothing has happened. Keeps, the Bible said, do not grow weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap a reward, right? How many people today are the product of there was somebody that God sent as a hound dog on heaven? Some way, wave that somebody, somebody hounded you into heaven. Come on, somebody, right? They, they, did, they were relentless. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad they didn't give up on you? Aren't you glad that God loved you so much while you were carrying on in your sin out there? Somebody was on assignment for you. Right? You married her. We call that missionary dating. Amen. <laughs> Yo, I just got, you know, sometimes I'm about to say something and the Holy Spirit just says, Shh, don't say that, don't say that. I say, that's the spirit of self-control, amen? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I almost, I almost killed the anointing right there. I almost killed it. And uh, anyway, I'm now, it's, it, it's 2004, it's 2003, I'm living in, in, no, it's 2004, I'm living in Utica, New York. I'm living in Utica, New York. And finally, uh, they convinced me to go into a rehab. So I'm in a rehab, I'm in Utica, New York. And my first or second day in there, um, a man comes up to me. His name is Richard Paleo. Remember, we're talking about the gospel, the word going out. And Richard Paleo comes up to me. He was an ex-Latin King gang member. His whole body was tattooed, like 100% of his body was tattooed. 
He had a scar from his belly up to his esophagus where somebody stabbed him and left him for dead. But he got, he, he, he got the revelation of Jesus and he became, this dude walked right up to me. I mean, bold as can be, looked at me in a rehab, put his finger in my face and said, if you continue in this lifestyle, you will die and you will go to hell. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I mean, I have, I've been, I've had people love me. I've had people gently correct me. But I had an all-out rebuke, and the Lord knew it was going to take somebody filled with tattoos, with a scar, because I respected it. I was like, okay, oh, wow. I I'll hear you. <laughs> Tell me more about this, Jesus. And he said, follow me. I followed him into this room, and we got on our knees, and we prayed, and I received Jesus for the first time. Because somebody preached the gospel to me. We have to be preachers of the gospel, right? And we got to be in-person preachers. I'm sorry. Listen, social media is cool. I find out any of my, any of our ministers just are you. Listen, social media, we've got social media. Everybody listening. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. But people don't need another social media preacher. They need someone to get down in the dirt with them, lay hands on them, call them out on their mess, be with them, be connected to them. You need some more angels and aitas who are picking up Glenn on the DL and taking him without telling anybody, without blowing a trumpet, like the Pharisees did. We got more Pharisees behind the pulpit in 2021 than we've ever had an entire generation. But meanwhile, we got, the real, we got true servants doing things behind the, behind the scenes and nobody sees anything. Hey, hey, uh, Nancy, we, we're going to do this. Hey, Nancy, no problem, Pastor. Nancy, same word, just what we need, just getting everything prepared for this. And when we do things behind the scene, and maybe nobody else sees it, but I promise you, there's an angel in heaven taking note of everything you do. Right. Write it down. No, the other day, um, as a ministry, I say this to you only because you're part of this ministry and you give. When I was in Africa, it was just the most, the most tremendous experience I've ever had. And I told all these ministers, and if, you're, if you love them, you're going to pray for them because I'll license them, but until I will not, I will not ordain them until they've gone to Africa. That's my new, that's my, that's my new rites of passage. You want to be ordained? You're going to Africa. Amen. I'm not talking about going to, there's some other countries you can go to. Pastor, I want to go to um, Scotland for my mission trip. No, you ain't going to Scotland. <laughs> you ain't going to Scotland. <laughs> Pastor, I really feel called to Venice, Italy to preach the gospel. <laughs> you can do that if you want. But you want to lay your life down? You want to lay your life down? You, you call to the ministry? Be careful. Because this gifting, this calling, there's no promise of safety to this thing. You know that, right? What Peter say? Peter said, turn me upside down. And I'm not worthy to die like Jesus died. James was sold in half. Paul was stoned. In fact, they thought Paul was dead. They left him stoned. Paul got up, shook himself off, went to the next town, began to preach the gospel with lumps on his face. Paul said twice, I've been beaten 39 times, 40 times minus one. Right? Peter walked in, preached the gospel. They said, hey, Peter, I told you don't preach the gospel. And who am I going to bet? You were God. They took him. They flogged him. And you know what Peter said when he walked out of the place? Praise God. I've been found worthy to be persecuted for this gospel. And, and, when, and the church, we got up to this. I was in it. Listen, listen, we have to make sure this is our heart. When I went to Africa, it changed everything in me because... I went there to preach our first church service we went to. We were in the villages, and I'm like, okay, where's the church? They said, this is the church. It's a big tree. It's a tree. In the middle of the night, at 1030 at night, and you could hear hyenas in the back cackling. You could hear lions. And I was scared to death. And they were just, I mean, I, I, I. You ever like try to get an anointing? And I'm like, and I'm talking about, and you have not been in an anointed worship service till you get a bunch of people doing choreographed worship. And I'm talking about, they were singing and chanting. And I mean, the, the, the expression of worship that came out of their spirit. And I'm thinking, they think that, I think that they got it rough? No, my friends, I think that we have it rough because they are so free to worship under a tree and, and just worship with, in, under a tree in the middle of the night. And I was thinking, 
Some of my church folks, they would, they'd be so eager. I got to go to work in the morning. I can't come to church. They was, we didn't get done church till 1 o'clock in the morning, and I felt so alive, and I said, this is what church is. I still remember laying in that first time. I said, are you locking that door? <laughs> is that door locked? Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And they call them manatas. And in the middle of the manata, they put all the cows. They care more about the cows than they do the wives. It's a true story. And they put, the, and they put these huge spikes up, and they put all the cows in there. And then the, the, man, the chief, I told you he's, he's polygamous. He's got eight or nine wives. He puts all his wives in a different manata around the circle with all her kids in the place. And so the cows are in the middle because they don't want nothing to happen to the cows. <laughs> and, uh, and God sent us on a mission because he loved people so much that he would send us to a people group. God, God is so full of love that he would disrupt the comfortability of preaching in North America with air conditioning and cushion seats to send us to a group of people in the middle of the woods, in the jungle, to tell them about Jesus, to marry one wife, come on somebody, Amen. to worship God and follow him. And you know what they did? They were so impressed that we came there, they ended up donating a piece of land uh, to the Assemblies of God when we went out there. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, he said, you're going to pay for that building because they had no building. And I felt such an unction come over me. So I went to the tribal, the tribal leader, I went to uh, Johannes, and I went to the head guy of the Assemblies of God, and I said, the Lord spoke to me, we're going to pay for this building. And they began to cry and begin to worship. And I came back right away, and I said, Lisa, get ready to transfer that money. And uh, we're going to send, we're going to send, you could build a whole church out there for $5,000. And I said, you know what, put an extra 200 in, because I want to pay for all the babies that have shoes, because none of the babies have shoes. I said, buy all the baby shoes for $200. So I want you to see, we're sending you the shoes, and we're sending the gospel, and you, because you give, you have just pioneered and paid for. We sent the, when do we send the uh, money? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, we wired $5,200 over, and the, the, the superintendent himself said, I will personally do this. He's going to build the church, send us pictures. So I want you to know that you are faithful giving. You have just pioneered a church in Kenya, Africa. Amen? Hallelujah. Why? Because blessed are the feet of those who preach the gospel. And this calling of God on your life is not something because you get notoriety. You don't get to walk around and let everybody know, hey, I'm a pastor now. I'm a pastor. You are. Changing my Facebook name. <laughs> Chief Apostle Franco Acevedo. End time prophet. End time prophet. Chief Apostle Franco Acevedo. All right. Um, but listen to me. This gospel is not something that makes us somebody. In fact, this gospel now has just regulated in my life that I've been commanded by God to lay my life down. I've been commanded by God to serve. I've been commanded to God to love my enemies. I've been commanded to, to God to lay my life down. And if people persecute you and lie about you and stab you in the back, I've been commanded by God to love them and preach the gospel anyway. And to anybody who thinks uh, becoming a minister or, or someone who's in ministry is this, is this bed of roses. I got news for you. You better be prayed up. You better be on your knees because you have more heartache in the ministry than you do stories of uh, mountaintop experiences. Right? And sometimes it hurts and you, you see the community and the messed up that it is and you see the crazy that's going on and Videos of people being killed and hurt, and I can't even turn it on because my heart just breaks so much. And I said, God, what in the world is going on? We need an answer. And the answer is not found in politics. I'm sorry. The answer is not found in, in society. The answer is still found in this book that's called the Bible. His name is Jesus. He's come to set the captive free. He's come to empower men and women. He's come to make broke people fixed. He's come to make lost people found. This is still worked today. And someone said, aren't you worried about the church being closed? No, the Bible says this gospel will be preached in all the world for a sign. And then the end shall come. It's a mandate. We must preach the gospel. We must preach this gospel. So number one, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, it is so important. Now, we went to, uh, we took the youth to uh, Kentucky and we went to the winter ramp. Tennessee. It's all the same once you get over the Memorial Bridge. <laughs> Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, it's all the same, right? Pennsylvania, it's all the same. 
Yeah, we were in Tennessee, weren't we? I've been telling everybody we're in Kentucky. <laughs> we drove through Kentucky. All right. So we drove back. It was me and my wife in the one vehicle with the kids, and Mary was in the car with us, and we put an evangelist on. And we listened to that. It was the longest sermon in the world. Where is Mary in here? She's not even there. Is she, oh, there she is. I said Mary, not Tony. All right. And we were driving. We listened to this evangelist. It was the longest sermon I've ever heard in my life. I mean, we, we drove for like four hours. It was one sermon. For four, no, that's nothing. And when I, I went down to Dr. Rodney Howard Browns, they had church service for five, five hours. You guys all been there, right? Five hours. I saw you were connected to the guy from Hawaii. You know, I invited, I invited him to come preach. Yeah. So if you get a chance, you tell him, say, I go to that church that the pastor invited you to come preach, all right? In July, I think I told him. So get on the phone with him, tell him, say, make it quick, all right? Make it happen. Oh, this dude was a Hawaiian volcano, man. This dude was preaching with this Hawaiian accent. I never even heard about him. This guy was just preaching. But anyway, this evangelist got on TV and he, uh, on the radio. He was preaching. You know what he preached about? He said he, said he has a small church or a small ministry building. And his uncle, who is an evangelist, came into the building and, to, and said, hey, that other building is yours as well. He says, I can't have it because somebody already put a bid on it. And he goes, I don't care. He goes, God just said that's your building. You need to claim that building. And all of a sudden, this faith got in my spirit. And we talked about this and talked about this. And while we were going through the same thing, we have a nice building. We're so grateful for it. But there was another building that's bigger, but someone put a bid on it. So we started going by faith like fool. You know, you know faith actually makes you look foolish on the outside. That's how you know you're in faith. Does it look foolish? Well, that's probably faith. So we start walking around a building that they've already began to close on, and they began to uh, put a deal on. They began to work on it, and part of me was like, felt like giving up. I said, I'm not, I'm not going in for this building. I just can't go in. But then I said, you know what? What do we got to lose? So we're over there praying. We're walking. Uh, we're praying over this building. I said, Lord, I know. But I said, you did it for that evangelist. You can do it for us. And then someone called me and said, hey, the guy that bid on the building, for a year they had this thing on lock. But the deal fell through. I said, praise God. Amen. I went out there with a stake, got a big old stick, took a rock, began to hammer it into the ground. And I bet you if the neighbors are looking at me, they're like, what in the world is that guy doing? I don't care. I'm going to look foolish for Jesus. Amen? Amen. I said, Lord, I'm staking this ground. I'm claiming it. I'm being carried. God, I don't care who's watching me. I'm on the front lawn of this church property crying in the middle of the day, just saying, God, give us this building because we need it. We can preach the gospel. We can have a mother's and children's home on it. We can have outdoor events. We can put a football field for the community. Oh, God, give us this building. And the building is now up for sale again. Amen? Faith, you catch some things you can teach and some things you have to catch. Right? You ever get around someone, get up and say, I was addicted to drugs. I had an encounter with Jesus. He set me free. All of a sudden, you realize that if God could do it for you, God could do it for me. Right? That same evangelist, I was, been, I was listening to him again, and he got up and shared a message about being generous. And I said, well, we're generous. We, we, support, we support like seven or eight ministries every month. Every month at our church, we send about money to eight, seven or eight ministries. But I said, you know what? That's not good enough. We're going to be hilarious in our giving. I, I probably, every time I come tell Lisa this, I probably have her like gripping the seat. That's not in our, that's outside the budget. I know it's outside the budget. But let's send $2,500 to this place so they can drill wells and, and give water to people. I guess what? God will take care of us. And let's do this and let's do that. We began to be generous. And this, and this minister said, he said, I was preaching and the Lord told me to be generous. He goes, I gave the most money I've ever given. And he goes, that in the next six months, I received more money in our ministry than I ever received. And I came back and said, Lisa, I said, you know how we're going to have this building transferred into our name? We're going to just start giving everything away. And I'm saying every month we're looking for some ministry somewhere to sow a seed into. And we're blessing. I'm talking about we just sent 5,200. We sent 3,500. We sent 2,500. I said, Lord, I'm, we're, we're sowing this seed before we even pay our bills here because we still believe that, God, you take everything we do and you, and you bless it and you multiply it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You should leave a good church service convicted by the Holy Spirit if you're sinning 
but then renewed in your mind because the word of God has raised you up. Hello? Hello. Turn me to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Luke 9, 57. Look at this one. This is the cost of discipleship. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that, something, some, that someone said to them, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to them, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. I want you to catch that in your spirit. A true minister will learn how to lead while they bleed. A true minister. A true, someone, a man or woman of God will never look at their current situation to say, I can't do something. But because God has done so much inside of me, I'm willing to lay my life down at any cost. With scars, with pain, with hurts, with loss. You know what's, you know, you know, you, you know, you can lose, a, you can lose an argument as a minister, as a man of God or woman of God. You don't always have to be right. In fact, the true sign that you're mature in the word of God is let somebody be wrong and tell you and you can say, okay, you win. I don't want to argue with anybody. I don't want to cast no more. Hey, I'm not casting any more pearls before swine. Hey, you don't want to believe? That's fine. I'm not arguing with you. That's blue, but it's red. Now, you know what? It's blue. You can have it. I don't care. I don't want, I don't want, I'm not arguing with anybody about anything anymore. This guy's the best. Okay, great. Praise God. He's the best. Amen. Let's get back to preaching the gospel. Let's get back to making the main thing the main thing. Hello, right? Look what it says. Look what he says. Then he said to another, follow me. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead, but you go and preach the kingdom. And another said also, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one have put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I just want to let you know now that you have made an open decision, everyone in this church to follow the Lord and our, and our ministers here, you will be tried. You'll be weighed. Remember what Jesus said to Peter? He says, hey, Peter, Satan asked me if he can sift you. Don't worry, I prayed to God, you're going to make it through, but you'll be sifted. When I was a young man, when I first got saved, I've shared the story with you how my mom was dying of cancer. In fact, two of us, two young men, we both got saved at the same time, both our mothers had cancer. And this guy became a friend of mine, and we were going to church together. And then I felt a call of God on my life to go to Bible college. And I wanted to tell everyone, I said, hey, why don't you come to Bible college with me? He goes, nah, man, I got to stay and take care of my mom. She's got cancer. I said, man, my mom's got cancer too. And I began to doubt. And I said, but Lord, I heard you call me. You told me to go. And I began to think. And I said, well, surely my mom is, my mom is more important than, the, than going to Bible college, right? But when God calls us to do something, you know what the Lord said? He said, I didn't come to bring peace on earth. I've come to bring a sword. I've come to divide. See, you always know who knows their Bible. Everyone's like, oh, let's just sing Kumbaya and God loves everyone. No, listen, of course God loves everyone. That's, that's the most elementary, rudimentary teaching there is. But he said, I've come to bring a sword. I've come to divide a mother against her daughter, a father against her son. I've come to, you, you, hey, it's, Jesus says it's either me or nothing. I'm not taking 2% of you. You're surrendering all to me. You hear about Muslims in the Middle East getting saved and they're going back and telling their families and their families are beating them and throwing them out and killing them and they're going to die. And Jesus said, I think if that costs you your life, guess right, you're giving it up to follow me. And I remember going back and telling them, he said, no, I, and this young man today still is floundering, floundering, no, never met his call. His mom got healed. My mom died. I remember in Bible college, my mom, when my mom was on her deathbed, I promised the Lord this. I said, Lord, I will go to Bible college. I will, I will never miss one day of Bible college. I will never. I had perfect attendance. Now, I'll tell you why I did that. Because I've, I've quit everything I've ever started in my life. That's what addicts do. We fight or flight. Oh, that's too hard. I'll just go this way. Right? Anybody else? You don't have to be an addict. Just a good sinner. 
That's too hard. I'm not going to do that. I'll go this way. That's too much opposition. I'll go that way. But when God calls us into the ministry, we plant ourselves right here. The winds blow on us. We move a little bit. The winds blow on us. The rain falls on us. The, 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 the waves crash on us. And we're still standing after it all falls. We plant ourselves. No, come hell or high water, this thing is non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable, this thing. I've come to preach the gospel. I've come to, I've come to love our community. I've come to tell some. even if it's offensive, even if it doesn't line up with your theology, this is not changing. God's word is steadfast. It doesn't move. God's word doesn't need to fit to your lifestyle, doesn't need to fit to my lifestyle. We need to bend our lives and break our lives to fit to the word of God. There was a time when you could teach in the Bible very rudimentary things, but today that's offensive. You know who the Bible is only offensive to? The Bible said it's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, to us, what is it, Keith? It's the power of salvation. When the word of God cuts me, it's not to drop me. When the word of God cuts me, it's because God sees something in me that needs to come out of me. And when the word hits me, it's only because he wants to build me up so that I could look back and begin to tell somebody else, uh-uh, that's not what we do here. Pastor, you're, I can't believe you're so full of hate. That's not hate. It's God's word. And I remember when my mom... I remember in Bible college, I promised the Lord, I was, God, I'm going to go every day. I'm never going to miss a day of college. I'm never going to miss a day of school. I got sick. I was tired. I didn't want to go. One day I got the flu. And you couldn't do that today because, you know, you try to go in with a little, they'd be catching you with your fever. Like, get back over there. You know, you can't come to school today. <laughs> this, is, this is before COVID. It was just the regular flu. Remember that? We used to have a flu. We don't have it anymore. <laughs> And I remember sitting there with a trash can in Bible college thinking I'm going to puke. And I'm just like, oh, Lord, please hold this down because I made you a promise that I would never miss a day of school. Ironically, I went in that Friday night, just began to worship with the flu in my body. And all of a sudden, I just began to sweat. God set me free. You know, he can sometimes the test. There's always a test to the promise. The promise always comes with a test. And when you pass the test, you go to the next one. And when you pass that one. You go to the next one. Hello? Anyway, I remember it was uh, our, my junior year in Bible college. And, uh, and, and, and God's so faithful. I, I still believe God did this. He brought my home mom. My, my mom, she passed away on, uh, on a Thanksgiving break. I had no money to get home to Bible. I had no money to get home. Someone just came and said, hey, the Lord told me to pay for your ticket. Here's some money. I'll send you there. I called my pastor. He met me at, at Trenton, uh, Newark International Airport, picked me up, brought me to my mom's side. And I still remember seeing her laid out with, with, with the cancer. And she came up, started talking to me for like five minutes. It was just God's so precious, right? God's so precious with us in this thing. He walks along with us. He partners with us. We're not by ourselves. And I remember when she passed away, and I remember looking at her, and I remember, I remember my Everyone, hey, Bobby, listen, don't worry about it. You fought a good fight. Just come home to New Jersey. Just, just quit Bible college and come home. And don't worry. And my professors were telling me the same thing. Just go home and quit. And everyone, and I think they meant good, but I was determined. I was determined. I was determined. I'm walking this thing out. I mean, I've, I, was, uh, I used to sleep in dope houses. I used to sleep in crack houses. I've been in and out of jails my whole life. I was a ward of the state. I was messed up. I'm finishing. God, you're, you're taking her home, but Lord, I, she's with you, and you gave her five. She came out of a coma and talked to me for five minutes, closed her eyes, and she said, I'm ready to go home, just like that. Blessed are the death of, the, of God's saints in his eyes. You know when God walks with you, he will lay you down when you follow him, and he will cause you, and he, he, can, he can raise someone up in a coma to talk to you for five minutes and say, okay, bye, I'm checking out. I'm going home. Don't pray for me. Don't worry about me anymore. I have no more cancer when I get to heaven. That's what my mom did. It was beautiful. It was amazing. My wife came in two days later because she was teaching up in, in, in college. She came in. She was like six, month, six months pregnant. My mom told me one day, she goes, I, the Lord told me I was going to meet your son. My mom told me, so I was holding on to that. She was going to live. Anyway, my wife comes in. My, my, my mom went back into a coma for like or whatever it is or whatever the state, state of, of not being able to respond. My, mom, my wife walks in. The Holy Spirit woke me up and said, hey, um, I'm about to, your, 
uh, your mom's about to come home. Go talk to her. I walked over, and my, my, wife, my mom opened her eyes, and my wife, she, my mom got to meet Gabriel. He was our firstborn. He was in the womb. She reached her hand up. This is the gospel truth. Laid her hand on my belly, laid her hand on her belly, and said, I'm ready now. Go home be with the Lord. And we prayed for her. She closed her eyes, and she went to glory. Now, some people say, how can you go back to Bible college? Oh, that's why I do go back to Bible college. That's why I continue this fight. That's why I walk this thing out. I can't, you, there's no excuse that you can say. There's no, I was just talking to a family, and the family was telling me that they're going through one of the hardest trials of their life, how their kids have disowned them. Their kids have disowned them. I'm going to let you know right now. I brought you into this world. <laughs> All right, finish it. I brought you into this world. <laughs> See, you know what your mom's told you. You, <laughs> you got his back? Dang. And there's nothing. If you... <laughs> If you walk this thing, if you walk this thing out, and you start out with, I started out in Bible college with, I think, 50 people in my freshman class. And everybody had a problem. Everybody had a problem. You think the devil's just gonna let you walk this thing out? You think he's gonna say, okay, Will, you know what, Will, you've been serving God now, you started your own business, and you're empowering people, walking around prophesying and dreaming, evangelist. You, I mean, this is a quiet, this is a quiet man of God here. Quiet man of God. You guys don't even know him unless I put him on blast for you. He'll call me up and say, Pastor, listen, I was praying. I get at least two phone calls a week. I look forward to those phone calls. Two, two days a week. Pastor, listen, I, you know, brother, you said this, but oh, by the way, I, I let that guy to Lord this. And I said, Will, Will, you got a call of God. He goes, Yeah, he goes, I know. He goes, my, You know what? I don't need to go and tell everybody what God is doing in my life. I mean, just so humble. Just humble. But you know, when you actually go that route, you know, God forces a spotlight on you. You think now that just because you're serving God, there's going to be no problems in your life? Uh-uh. Worse. Put your seatbelt on. Put this other seatbelt on. Get your hand on the steering wheel because this is about to be a bumpy ride. This is about to be a bumpy ride. And there's going to be potholes and there's going to be trials. There's going to be tests. There's going to be people that you put in your front seat to help. And they're the ones that's going to rob you and steal from you. But you know what you keep doing? You keep doing it and you keep preaching and you keep moving and you keep pushing the kingdom because I don't care how you start, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. You could have failed. Oh, let me talk to everyone who's ever messed up in the house of God today. Get my Pentecostal way out here. Let me talk to everybody in the house that's ever failed. God's not done with you. You hear the enemy whispering to you, oh, you're a, pre you're a Christian, you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're a minister. Look at you, look what you did. Devil, if you don't shut your little defeated butt up. God, I thank you that we are covered by the blood. And you knew that we would fail, and you knew we would mess up. You knew we would make mistakes. And you said, yep, you're my son. You're like David, a man after my own heart. I might have failed. I might have made a mistake. I might have... Take, I might have almost crashed the car, but the good news is, Jesus, take the wheel. Because now I might have had a few bumps, but I'm finishing this thing strong. In fact, many people I've met who failed in ministry and messed up, they have such a more grateful heart because they said, God, I've tasted glory and I failed. Oh, God, give me one more chance. Could you imagine Samson as he's in the middle of killing Philistines? The man was blind and lost all his eyesight. Why? Because he met some girl, so he met some harlot somewhere named Delilah. Oh, Samson, Samson, please tell me your secrets. No, Delilah, I can't tell you. In fact, Delilah, if you tie me up with seven cords that have never been used before, surely, surely my strength will leave me. That little lion harlot called it, tied him up. That man of God broke out that like it was nothing. Time after time, he was tried. And eventually, well, that's why you got eventually. When, you, when Delilah comes around you, get behind me, Satan. Because eventually you, she will whisper in your ear and talk you and take your anointing from you. It is just merely coincidental that today I am bald with no hair. <laughs> a 
hey, bro, it's just, you know what I'm saying? We can't have it all, the good looks and all the hair, you know what I'm saying? I ain't giving Ray five. I ain't giving Ray five. Look at that hair. It ain't fair, man. Six foot five and a whole head of hair. Cat, just simmer down back there, all right? Delilah's over there just skinning, and Samson finally just gives an anointing. I mean, the man of God used to walk in, the Bible said, and take, take gates off entire cities and break them and walk down the, just like it was nothing, just, there's my, just Samson just breaking. That's a broke Samson, ain't it? Just breaking stuff. And all of a sudden, eventually, he gives away the secrets. He gives away the secret to the sauce. Come on, can you imagine? You know the worst part about that is? As, as Samson is sitting in a dungeon somewhere, in a Philistine dungeon, with his hair, his hair shaved off and his, his vision taken from him, eventually sin will take the vision that God gave you away from you. Right? You touch it once, you touch it twice, eventually it takes your eyes from you. Your vision's gone. You, can't, you have no vision. Stuck in a basement, a Philistine basement with your enemies, listening to them mock and laugh at you, and he, Sam, Samson was pushing a wheel treading their wheat for them, chained, a blind man walking around. I don't know what's worse, being anointed and losing it or never having it. Because the regret of the cycle of life of walking around with no fruit, I think imagine as Samson was pushing that thing, I could think, just imagine what he was thinking of those days when he was lighting foxes tails on fire and, and running through destroying Philistines like it was nothing. And then he got alone with God and this was his cry. Father, forgive me. If you would, in your mercy and grace, let my hair grow back. Give me my anointing. I will destroy your enemies. The Holy Spirit is so... It, it, it doesn't even make sense of the grace of God. And the Bible says Samson's hair began to grow back. His strength came upon him, and he took the entire camp of the feast. The Bible said he killed more Philistines in this one act than he did his whole ministry because God's grace comes back on those who repent. I wonder if there's a couple people that said, God, thank you for that, that anointing of grace. Go back to that scripture. Do you have, is, is, the, is the thing working yet or is it not working? He said, look, look what it says in Ephesians. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, is that 4 and what, 30? 4 and 30. Miles, I, I like having you there because you, that word just comes out of you. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. You know, this has to be our cry as ministers of the gospel. You know, you know when you're walking with God, when, when that, you know that thing that you do that you shouldn't do, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just pricks you. So, he's so gentle. Isn't it amazing how gentle he is? He just pricks you real quick. Uh, reminds you, you're righteous. Righteous people don't do that. Don't grieve him. You can't, I don't understand how today we have exchanged the working of the anointing for, I told you earlier, the Bible said the gifts and the callings are without repentance. There's many people that are gifted, and there's many people that are called. But those same people can operate without an anointing. It happens all over the place. You know what David said? David said, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Moses said, if you don't go, I'm not going. I can't do this without you. Lord, let us be a people that have experienced your grace in this house. And because we've experienced your grace, those who are forgiven much, love much. I don't want to grieve you. I don't want to grieve you. Oh, I don't want to grieve you, Lord. I want your spirit with me. I want your spirit with me. I've heard of the stories of Catherine Coleman, how she would just get around alone with the Lord and begin to pray, and the Spirit of God would come on her so great. And she would talk about, you know, Catherine Coleman failed. You know she failed before? Catherine Coleman failed. And it was with relationship. 
And she went into the wilderness for a long time and cried out and said, Oh God, please give that back to me. The Lord gave it back to her and she began to be used by God mightily. Amy Simple McPherson, another woman of God, was another one who, who was disobedient to the faith and didn't listen to God and, 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 and it came because of a relationship. I've seen more people lose the anointing over a relationship than anything ever else in the history of their life. And she repented and look how gracious God was. God said, okay, here's the anointing again. Oh Lord, would you just take a moment, bow your heads with me and say this, Holy Spirit. Give us, give us the full measure of what you intend for us in this house. Can I prophesy now that there'll begin to be a move of the Spirit of God like never before? In a season of uncertainty, as political in unrest flows in the streets, as racial tensions flow in the community in the streets, there'll be a common thread where every man and every woman, regardless of skin color, have found a place, and it's in a place called the house of God, where men and women are not determined by color of their skin, but by the spirit and measure of glory that they cover, carry. And with God, we would have a safe haven in this house. As, as hell is beginning to flow and as evil begins to run rampant and incurable diseases flow, there'll be a house, God, There'll be a house of prayer where people come and begin to prophesy and preach and lay hands on and your spirit begins to move and in the middle of a church service the anointing begins to flow and your word is released drug addicts are set free prostitutes come home people on the verge of divorce come back lord and reconcile oh holy spirit begin to move begin to move Begin to move, oh Lord, begin to move. And Lord, I prophesy that there'll begin to be a, a moving of the fivefold in this place, Jesus. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the prophets and the prophetesses to, to begin to have the word of the Lord in their mouth. No, we don't want we're not looking for somebody to get up and Tell someone, thus say the Lord, I, there's a new Hyundai waiting for you somewhere. No, but Lord, let a man and woman of God to jump up and begin to say, thus saith the Lord. I have found this house not wanting in favor. The Spirit of God shall dwell in this place. And there shall be a breaker anointing in this house where the most ordinary man and ordinary woman, God has called for such a time as this. You know, you know, you know, the Lord used Babel. The Lord used Babel to separate man. You know that? Man gathered under the flesh. Listen to this. Man gathered in the flesh. They said, come, let us build a tower. We will be like God. That's what they said. God looked down and said, go confuse their languages. But then... On Pentecost, listen to me. Then God used language to draw men to him. You got to see how God works. But it's not the flesh, it's the spirit. And the Bible said there was men of every color. Christians and Greeks and Arabs. Jews and Gentiles. Black and brown and light. They all were gathered together under the anointing of the spirit. And they said, are not these men speaking in our own dialect? And they began to prophesy under the anointing of the Spirit. And Peter got up and preached. And 3,000 people were added to the kingdom that day. What we try to do in the flesh is destroyed. But when God does something in the Spirit, glory begins to happen in His name. We're going to continue this morning with our communion as our ushers begin to make their way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, 
Oh, we love you today, Father. We love you, God. Jesus. to take it. I want us to begin over these next few moments. Would you steady your heart for a moment? Would you begin to examine? Examine yourself for a moment before the Lord. I can tell you this, if you examine yourself the right way, you'll find yourself falling short. But the good news is, there's been a great atonement where they've examined the lamb and the lamb has no spot nor wrinkle. So today, Holy Spirit, we ask you to check us, Lord. And before we take communion, I want you just to begin to forgive all your debtors right now. Before you take communion, begin to forgive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, today, Lord, we forgive all of our debtors today. Right now, I release, I release anybody who's ever hurt me. Anybody, who's, anybody, who I've, anybody who I've hurt, Lord, forgive me. Holy Spirit, anything inside of me, apply the blood to my life today. Let me be in right standing with you, Father. 